Formula One cars are packed with secrets. Despite ever-increasing rules restrictions, engineering teams keep coming up with new ways to go even faster. In today's episode, we'll continue to talk about Formula One car secrets that have made history. We'll discuss a genius solution that involves using two chassis in a single car, explore the purpose of an extra secret battle, and find out what a Formula One car can do at 40,000 RPM. Let's get started! In the late 70s, Formula One cars started using ground effect technology more and more. These involved flexible skirts and sometimes even a fan at the back, often called a vacuum cleaner. The closer the car was to the ground and with a narrow front and a wider back, the faster the air moved underneath it. These gave the car extra downforce and made it faster in corners. But these also made the cars less stable and more dangerous. So, starting in 1981, there were new rules. Flexible skirts were banned and cars had to be at least 6 cm off the ground. But Colin Chapman, a Lotus engineer and a pioneer in using ground effect and flexible skirts, found a way around this. He created the Lotus 88 car, which had two chassis in one car. The internal chassis included the main body that held the gearbox and engine, along with the suspension. This suspension was soft, which made the car more comfortable and responsive. Then there was an external chassis, sort of like a car within a car. It had a stiff suspension and was mainly for aerodynamics. When the car moved, the aerodynamics pushed the eternal chassis down. This brought back the ground effect and the skirts on the sides. After that, the external chassis would go back to its starting position. Pictures show a gap between the two chassis. This design made the car both comfy and agile, while also bringing back the ground effect and skirts. And it did all this without breaking the rules, at least technically. But the story doesn't end happily. Other teams couldn't copy the design and complained a lot. Even though the Lotus 88 passed all the checks, it was eventually ruled out for using active aerodynamics. So this clever car, which couldn't be a champion, never got to race in the 1981 season. In 1997, a photographer spotted something strange during a Formula One race. Even when a McLaren car was taking a turn and shouldn't have been braking, its rear brakes were glowing red hot. Curious, the photographer snapped a photo of the car's pedal area and found an extra pedal. This stirred up lots of questions and debates. So what was the secret? Turns out, McLaren had added an extra brake cylinder that was only connected to the right rear wheel. This tweak made the car's chassis more agile in turns. Here's how it worked. The driver would use the regular brake pedal to slow down, but in the middle of the turn, they'd use the extra pedal to brake only one of the rear wheels. This allowed the driver to speed up while turning, making the car rotate better and fixing understeer issues. You won't believe it, but this small change instantly shaved off half a second from their lap times and even led them to win several races that year. But then photos surfaced, showing either three or four pedals in the car, which really got people talking. Sometimes there were two clutch levers on the steering wheel and two brake pedals. Other times there was one clutch lever on the wheel, a separate clutch pedal and an extra brake pedal. By 1998, the system had gotten even better. Now drivers could decide during the race which rear wheel to brake. But the spotlight was already on them, and many protests followed. In the end, this clever yet simple hack got banned. The reason? The rear wheels weren't supposed to help in steering the car. All right, now for the most exciting part of the story. If you made it this far into the video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. Let's keep going! 
Let's take a trip back to the 1960s, a time of fewer restrictions, and revisit Lotus and its founder, Colin Chapman. In 1967, Chapman saw an intriguing design for an IndyCar race car. Although two of these cars crashed, one led for the entire 500-mile Indy 500 race, until a technical glitch, a barren failure, took it out of the running. This car was nicknamed Silent Sam, and it featured a gas turbine engine, the kind you might hear in helicopters. Because this seemed risky for the future of the series, turbine engines were later banned in IndyCar racing, but not yet in Formula One. That's why Colin Chapman, always the innovator in Formula One, decided to bring this engine technology into the sport. The car was already tested in IndyCar after all. The engine used for a two-stage turbine engine called the PT6 modified for the car use. It produced 500 horsepower and could rev up to 45,000 rpm. In theory, it could even be pushed to 600 horsepower, while piston engines at the time could barely exceed 400 horsepower. Air came in through an intake at the front, got compressed, mixed with kerosene, and then ignited. The turbine spun and the exhaust gases exited from the top, flowing along the body toward the rear wing. The car ditched the transmission altogether, but it did feature all-wheel drive without any gear shifting. So there you have it, a glimpse into the adventurous spirit of 1960s motorsports and one of its key innovators, Colin Chapman. On paper, it seemed perfect. More power than the competition, no loss from gear shifting and all-wheel drive for extra stability. But there were issues. Because the car didn't have engine braking, the brakes had to be seriously beefed up. Double discs were used at the front, and extra cooling was added at the back. The car also weighed more. It needed larger fuel tanks that could hold 270 liters because fuel consumption was almost 100 liters per 100 kilometers. The all-wheel drive added weight too. In the end, the Lotus race car weighed 100 kilograms more than its rivals. But the biggest problem was the throttle response time. Initially, it was 6 seconds, meaning the driver had to plan ahead when to hit the gas pedal, so the turbine could spin up and the car could accelerate. They managed to reduce this to 3 seconds, but it still wasn't enough. In the Indy 500, the turbine engine performed better because the race is mostly at full throttle on a novel track. But in Formula One, with its winding tracks, it didn't offer significant advantages. The Lotus 56B did well on wet tracks, mostly due to its all-wheel drive. It climbed from 22nd to 10th place in one race, but eventually went off track. In another good race, it managed an 8th place finish. So Lotus decided to go back to the traditional piston engine, which led to numerous victories. They probably could have perfected this technology by making the turbine engine smaller and more responsive. But with advantages in other areas, it made sense for Lotus not to spend time on such experiments. Back in 1967, Colin Chapman saw an interesting design in an IndyCar race car. Two of them crashed, but one led the entire 500-mile Indy 500 race until a bearing failure occurred at the end. All three race cars mentioned in this video made history. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it interesting. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section. Goodbye for now.